Hey everyone, it's Scott from startmedia.com and in this video I'm going to be covering what's new in WordPress 5.4. WordPress 5.4 has added a lot to the block editor, including some functionality that I'm finally as glad is in there. Um, WordPress 5.4 adds some new blocks and it modifies an existing block and we're going to be talking about what's been added. So. One of the great things about the block editor is it continuously receives performance improvements and accessibility improvements. And we don't touch on those a lot because it's going to affect a minority of users, but there were improvements for accessibility. We're gonna move past that though, because I'm not gonna break down the accessibility too much. There is a doc on them on the wordpress.org website. I'll include a link in the description. But that being said, we're gonna look at the cool new options that have been added. So we've gotten two new blocks that are actively usable called social icons. This allows you to easily add social icons to your most used social accounts. Now, this button looks a little confusing at first, but it's really not. What you do is you click the icon you're looking to edit and then you include the URL. If the button is simply not being used, you can not include the URL and it shouldn't render on your front end. So I'm gonna include this one. So as you could see, I put the URL to be a blank hashtag. And if you put them in for each of the ones that you wanna use, the other ones will disappear after you click off. One thing I kinda of wish that it did a little bit better on was making it clearer that the buttons weren't going to show unless the URL was injected because when it shows them as faded out, it doesn't really help communicate that, hey, this isn't going to render on the front end. Now, one annoying thing that you might have with 5.4 is that it automatically puts the editor in full screen mode for new applications. So all you have to do is click over here and you clicked off for full screen mode, it goes back to normal. You don't have to worry about it too much. The other new block that we got was called the buttons block. The buttons block is just like the button block that previously existed, but it allows for multiple buttons. You get basically the same sort of functionality, except instead of choosing square or round now, you can, in, you can put a border radius. A border radius is a CSS property that basically says how rounded the object is. So if you put 50, it's now very rounded. But if you put 90, as you can see, it's a lot less round. So you basically work backwards a little bit and if you put the 50 you can go up to 50 if you go anything higher it won't make it round if you put anything normally a good solid number that most people go with for a rounded icon is around 20 or if you want to go super round to make it more pill shaped you go all the way up to 50. you could choose whether you want the item to now be a solid background or if you want to have a background gradient gradients are seeing a lot of improved use in wordpress and it does include some basic examples that you can use and they look interesting one of the great things that's been added in gutenberg is expanded gradient options to allow you to more frequently customize the way that your sites look without needing to get into the nitty-gritty of css which can be quite complicated and the gradients option is actually really simple to use but provides you an incredible range of flexibility like any one of these button, none of these button colors look like the others, except for maybe this one and this one, just slightly different greens, but they all look colorful and they're super easy to use. You can just simply drag the range of colors that you're looking to use and you can get completely different looking buttons. It's pretty interesting. And if you want to add more colors, you just slap them in there and it's very easy to use. And I'm quite pleased with where this buttons block has come. If you wanna add another button, you just click here. And if you wanna add only one button, you could delete any one of these from here. Super easy, super impressed, and I'm very proud of the core team and the Gutenberg team for what they've done with this. So now that the buttons block has been expanded, there's been improvements. Um, the featured image box now you should be able to just drag an image directly in there instead of needing to click on it and then have it in there. So all you have to do is drag the image from your file manager on your PC or on your Mac in the finder window and it should work without a problem. 
The navigation block now gets additional colors. We're gonna look at that. This was included originally in Gutenberg 7.3. All changes in Gutenberg up to version 7.5 were integrated in core. So the one thing about the navigation block is it's currently not visible, which is a little weird because the changes were in there. But the reason that the Gutenberg uh, team decided to not include the menu block in core at the moment is strictly because it wasn't it frankly wasn't useful. Uh, I covered on the navigation block in another video. Um, it's not in there right now, so we're just gonna install the Gutenberg plugin so I can show you the change. The reason it's not in there is strictly because it has no use at the moment. Um, nobody could find a decent use for it because it's not full site. There's no full site editing. Um, if we go and now search for navigation, we have a layout element. We could choose to create from top level pages. And now you have additional functionality. You could choose the color scheme. Your theme has to set it. You could set a default. You could change your navigation structure and you have text and background colors. It looks really solid. There is now a full gradients API for developers out there as well as a, you can now use the collections API and I think it's the variations API. These are basically just APIs that allow you to create variations of addition of existing blocks and the collections block uh, collections API allows you to group a collection of blocks by a namespace. This just makes it easier for you to sort blocks that are from your own plugin. For instance, if you have a plugin like Atomic Blocks, it just makes it easier to make a collection of them. And the plugin and theme authors have, I believe they added a new hook for you to easily set up custom fields. But other than that, this wasn't a very feature rich Update it just added really the two new buttons. The one thing I do wish to see is some way of easily adding these social buttons outside of the post. If you go to the widgets menu, for instance, I'm going to show you what I mean. Typically, users integrate their social icons in the widgets section, but if I use a text block. I have the default classic editor, so I can't actually use social icons in a scenario that makes sense to me. So I'm a little disappointed so far in the improvement of outside of the editor. I was really hoping to see some way of adding the social icons in a place that wasn't the post content, but hey, it's there and it doesn't even cover all social networks, but that's because the icons have to be made. So personally, I enjoy the feature. 5.4 uh, has been a good incremental update. It's nothing crazy. It hasn't added or fundamentally changed anything. It's just I wish the blocks could be used outside of the editor because I've never met anybody who puts their social icons in the post content. There are applications for this in custom post types, for instance, if you had a team custom post type you could put the social icons in there in a pre-made template. But I haven't seen a lot of themes make use of that feature yet, and I haven't come across a site where anybody's really said, I need to put social icons in my post, or really in the even in the pages. Most of the time, they just stick them in the header or the footer. But it's a good incremental update. I hope that 5.5 adds something a little bit bigger, because it is a more major release. People tend to think that you have 0.5 and then you have your major release, which is like version five to six, that would be a major release. But when you get to the middle ground, people do kind of expect something a little bit more. And I'm hoping to see something along those lines for version 5.5, but it's just been a good improvement update. I've had a faster editing experience and I've gotten more people to use the block editor now that the performance issues have been resolved with longer post types. If you have any questions about 5.4, you want to give your own insights about the navigation block that isn't in WordPress core, or you want to talk about the gradient features, I'd love to see what you're doing. If you're if you're working on a website right now, or you've been using it, link it in the description comp section below and I'll give you my thoughts. I really like seeing what people are using the block editor for. Ever since I converted my own homepage to use it, I felt like it just needs a bit more love and attention from the average user. So otherwise, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.